there's a black vulture there and another black vulture there just sort of sitting waiting to see if I'm dying and any moment they can have a little meal. I'm here in the Barbasul Nature Reserve in Beni, Savannas of Bolivia. And I am in one of the many types of habitats we're protecting here, short grass savanna. This is a favorite habitat of the buff-breasted sandpiper, and that's why I'm here trying to film them. The buff-breasted sandpiper breeds in the Arctic of Canada and Alaska. It migrates overland um, through North America, through Central America, and then crosses from Colombia, the western point of South America, across South America to winter in uh, southern Brazil, Uruguay, and Argentina along the coast. The population is reducing and it's threatened. During the migration route, the bird has stopover sites. The buff-breasted sandpiper visits Barbasol Nature Reserve from August to October every year. At Barbasol Nature Reserve, we've recorded over 1,400 individuals in a single day. And that's quite significant if you think they're probably here 7 to 14 days. Um, just this year, we counted 300 individuals. Every year, the numbers vary. It tends to be with migration. Uh, we don't really understand, and that's why we're counting the different areas. Some areas are popular one year, not as popular the next year. We've been really learning a lot about the bird in the last 10 years, especially now with certain types of tracking devices. It appears the birds seem to be in two modes. They're either in migration mode, where they're flying thousands of kilometers, miles in a day or two days, what have you, or they're, they're landing somewhere to forage. And when they're foraging, they seem to stay for seven to 14 days. So, so once they've landed, they, they're in an area for quite a long time. Some of the, the preliminary um, tracking results is that one stop of the site is around Texas, some of the fields in Texas, on the fall migration. Um, another one is in Colombia and Venezuela and the grasslands there. But then it looks like a large part of the birds, they fly over the Amazon jungle and then the first adequate habitat they come to is the Beni savanna. What's incredible is the timing. The savannas of Beni flood for six months of the year. Then we have a very strong dry season where from May to October there's pretty much no rain. So in September, the peak of when buff-breasted sandpipers arrive here is also when the peak of this habitat remains. These are from rivers and lakes that are drying and the edge leaves this short grass, which isn't grazed grass. This is just, this was underwater two months ago. And so this is all that remains. It's timed perfectly for the most amount of this type of habitat. They would stay here if it didn't start raining. And then it starts raining here and this will flood. So by December, this will start getting very moist and flooding and it'll be flooded by, by January. So this isn't a good spot to spend the winter. Barbasol Nature Reserve has received support by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Neotropical Migratory Bird Conservation Act, which has helped us work on protecting habitat for the buff-breasted sandpipers when they migrate through. Part of that uh, support has also gone to our research. We are trying to understand what is the ideal habitat for the buff-breasted sandpiper and so how can we manage the reserve to protect more of it and how we can talk to surrounding ranches about how to protect this habitat or manage it better so that it remains for the buff-breasted sandpiper to visit. Part of what I would love to have seen is that the buff-breasted sandpiper needs pristine untouched savanna because we've got a lot of that. But it actually is turning out that it really does like this short grass, it doesn't like burnt areas, it doesn't like the tall grass savanna, and it seems that it prefers to be with some level of cattle. That, that cattle and cattle fecal material it gives more food resource for the bird. Maybe cattle are, is sort of filling an uh, ecological niche that was here 10,000 years ago before megafaunal extinctions when there were horses, a type of rhino, a type of grazing llama in this kind of habitat. Part of what we're doing is counting the birds. 
Uh, every year we have a, a study, a monitoring study, to note fluctu fluctuations in the population. And we're trying to understand um, where they are and, and look into researching uh, different aspects of their preferred habitat. So are they closer to a tree stand? Is there more cattle? What level of cattle? The height of the grass species and what they might be eating. Um, and all of this work will help us to manage Barbasul better, to make sure that there's good habitat for the buff-breasted sandpiper when it comes to visit. And in our education project, we can talk to the surrounding ranchers about the importance of the buff-breasted sandpiper and maybe some things they could do to improve that this habitat remains accessible and healthy for them when they migrate through.